Hello, welcome to the week that was, the week of UNGA, the United Nations General Assembly. Many world leaders were there, among them President Trump. He came, he saw, he blustered. But as well as bluster, there was also some nuance. He could perhaps have done with a bit of that when he threatened to destroy North Korea. Not the North Korean regime, but North Korea. The United States has great strength and patience. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. That was clumsy, and that was the headline. But in the body of the text was a clear commitment to continue to work through the United Nations. And so the message? You still have time, but not that much. He'd called King John Un the rocket man and a madman. Kim fired back, describing the American president as mentally deranged. And then almost charmingly, he said he was a, a dotard. Dotard? Journalists reached for the dictionary. From dotage, a state of senile decay. Now, is it all rhetoric? No one knows. But this week, the Americans quietly sent an aircraft carrier to South Korean waters for joint military exercises. The other big speech of the week was in Florence, where the British Prime Minister Theresa May sketched out her view of the EU-UK relationship during and post-Brexit. The timing? Two days before the German election. The British need to get their story straight, because they know that once the German election is over, Chancellor Merkel will begin to concentrate on foreign affairs, including Brexit. Up to now, it's been a phony war. Manoeuvrings, positioning, bluster. The real dealing starts soon. On Tuesday, disaster struck Mexico City and the surrounding area. An earthquake measuring 7.1 brought down buildings, killing several hundred people. The capital is especially prone to earthquakes. It's built on a fault line, on a dried-out lake bed, and the ground underneath is soft. Given the choice now, you wouldn't build a mega city there, but it's done. And the authorities can only try to build quake-resistant buildings. As with the rescue and cleanup effort, it's a work in progress, but with questions again being asked about the speed of that progress. Finally, it's referendum time. Or is it? The Spanish region of Catalonia intends to hold a referendum on independence on October 1st. Madrid says this is illegal under the Constitution. This week, police confiscated tens of thousands of ballot papers and arrested several officials. This led to demonstrations in Barcelona. Opinion polls have the leave-remain vote evenly split. Spain's heavy-handed approach this week could result in wavering voters coming down on the leave side. Repression of the vote is a dangerous tactic. Madrid is also now sending extra police. They will operate alongside the existing police there and Catalonia's own police force, the Mossos Esquadra. This could get nasty. As could the referendum on independence for Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdistan region. That's coming up this week. Iraq's government and its highest court say the vote is unconstitutional. Turkey and Iran oppose it, fearing it will encourage separation movements in their own countries. If the vote is held, the expectation is of a clear independence victory. If so, then what? Well, that depends on how much territory the Kurds claim, especially in the oil-rich Kirkuk region, and the speed at which they move. We live in a time of change, and change is almost always uncertain. That was the week that was. See you next time. <laughs>